What's up guys, Agent here again with the PDS Patch Notes 5.1.1, a first look at the changes that have been made. So this is the second week of the PTS, so for those guys who are kind of new to the PTS cycles, generally speaking, the first week of the PTS is obviously the release of the PTS. The second week, generally speaking, is more bug fixes than anything else, not really any sort of balance changes. You might find a few balance changes in the second week. Usually these are changes that have were not ready for the first PTS week, and so we're pushed through the second week. The third week is when we see uh, changes based on feedback that they've received over the past week or so and the fourth week is very similar to the second week where they might have a couple of bug fixes primarily uh, with a few changes in there that we're not able to uh, make it onto the third week for instance uh, for example there might be feedback from the second week that weren't they, they weren't able to incorporate into a third week change um, then depending on if the PTS is fourth week or fifth week the fifth week is more or less the same mostly bug fixes, a couple of rebalance issues uh, that might not have been able to make into the past two weeks. So this is the second week, so there might be a few balance changes here, uh, but for the most part, we should only expect to see just basically bug fixes. So going through all of these, uh, again, we will be focusing in mostly on the PvE side of things. Uh, we'll touch upon PvP where I feel comfortable speaking about it, but mostly we'll be looking at a PvE perspective. Uh, so we have Witches Festival, uh, new mementos, probably a new way to collect things. Uh, I did notice that on the PTS there were a couple of new recipes that I believe she will be coming out with the Witches Festival. Uh, so of those recipes, there's basically um, a gold version of Blood Mara for stamina. Uh, I believe there is a gold version for Tristat food, which is actually better than Tristat food in terms of the maximum amount of stats it gives, as well as providing additional health regen. Then I'm blanking on the other third gold rarity food, um, but the three foods that should be coming out with Witch Mother's Festival, um, the only one that you should be really be focusing in on would be the tank food, which is the tristat food. The other two gold foods were not quite as strong as current blue food. Um, so unless you want them from the secondary effects, I would probably wouldn't necessarily uh, collect those two. I'd probably just focus in on the tristat food. I'm blanking on what it's called because the PTS is down, so I'm not able to look it up. Um, but the tristat food is going to be the new tank food, most likely, if they don't change it between now and when uh, Scalebreaker goes live. Uh, these are some known issues here. Not too much here, uh, but the main one that I kind of want to discuss really briefly is that uh, there's a 100 millisecond delay after you do a bash, um, which I was trying to figure out when I was trying to figure out the Mars Lock rotation for the new March Helm Set Mars Lock, uh, but it seemed a little bit uh, slow, and this is this is why. So basically things like sprint, dodge, bash, bar swapping uh, can fail to occur if cast within 100 milliseconds of activating an ability. Um, this is an issue, this is a known issue, and they are trying to get this fixed. Um, so for those of you guys who are testing things out, and you know your bar swap might not be going off, or you're trying to use Mars Lock and uh, you're not able to bash like on, on Q, uh, this is probably why. There's a 100 second delay now uh, for bashing and bar swapping after you activate an ability, which might explain uh, a couple of the clunkier parses that I've had at the very least. At the very least, I know I'm not going crazy. There were a couple of reports floating around on the discourse I was in that there was this sort of 100 millisecond delay, and that has been confirmed here. So for those of you guys who are parsing on the PTS, just be mindful of this 100 second millisecond delay. It might uh, explain why your parses are not going as smoothly as you would imagine they should. Uh, Trifocus is not currently proccing with the Lightning Staff. That might affect some of you guys who are running Lightning Staff builds, perhaps, on the PTS, testing those out. Uh, but just uh, be mindful of that. Uh, but beyond that, everything else... Uh, the only other thing would be Searing Heat, which I believe uh, is the... Uh, second ability under the Ardent Flame line for Dragon Knights, that is uh, Burning Embers and Noxious Claw. Uh, so this is going to be updated uh, in the future. So just be mindful of that. If you are using that as a spammable for whatever reason, uh, they are going to be updating that. Um, here, not much in the Elsewhere fixes, uh, not much in the Morrowind fixes. Uh, skill Breaker, a couple of fixes in the dungeons, uh, Lair of Mars Lock and Moongrave Fane. Uh, let's see, combat and gameplay, this is where uh, we're going to be really focusing in on. Player source oblivion damage will no longer bypass immunity on bosses, so if a boss is immune to oblivion damage or is invulnerable, then oblivion damage isn't going to damage them anymore. Um, for overload, the heavy attack from this ability can no longer be interrupted, so this is probably more for PvP because no uh, PvE mob can interrupt any, anything, so only really effectful for PvP. Not even sure if Overload is used anymore in PvP. It used to be a thing way back when. Uh, overload sniping was a thing. Overload light attack sniping. Uh, Templar, uh, Puncturing Strikes. 
while now using an older version of camera controls predating the adjustments with Merkmire. This was done to prevent many of the errors occurring explicitly with gamepad mode. So those of you guys who play with gamepad, uh, your uh, camera controls uh, hopefully will not be as buggy when you use puncturing sweeps. So that would be uh, puncturing sweeps and biting jabs. Dawn's Wrath, Living Dark, they reduce the healing from this ability by about 55%. The heal will be equal to the first take of Unstable Core, but can happen twice as frequently and will allow for overall more effective power if you are constantly attacked. This was the original design, but the heal was incorrectly referencing a much stronger heal and thus leading to the Chaos Man if you saw. Uh, so this is probably going to affect Templar tanks more. Your, this is was going to be a very reliable self-heal, but they reduced it down a little bit. Uh, so just something to keep in mind for Templar tanks. Uh, not that big of a change, but it is something to keep in mind. Uh, I don't think it's going to affect anything else outside of Templar tanks. I could be mistaken, uh, but again, I don't really PvP so much, uh, so I don't think Living Dark is going to be used in PvP at all. As a reminder, this was an updated skill uh, in the first week of PTS, so they completely rechanged how it works. So Living Dark now uh, puts the shield around yourself, and you heal every time you get hit uh, by a direct damage attack. I think it's direct melee, it might just be direct damage, period. Um, so this is going to be more of a self-heal, reliable self-heal for once for Templar attacks, as opposed to using something like Breath of Life or Ritual of Rebirth or something like that. For the Restoration Staff, Healing Ward, they increase the heal strength of this ability to 100% of the shield's remaining strength from 25% of its strength, but it can no longer critically strike. Uh, this will continue to bypass Battle Spirits. Um, so this is, generally speaking, going to be an overall buff, I think, for both PvE and PvP. Uh, I don't really heal too much, and I haven't really been paying too close attention to Healing Ward itself. The only reason I... I know this has been used is mainly for uh, Lakesi's hard mode to give people major vitality with combination with the Black Lord's Prison Staff. So I'm not 100% certain how this would impact things. This feels like a buff, uh, but the fact that it can no longer critically heal might end up being more or less a wash. Uh, so again, not 100% sure whether this is a buff or a nerf uh, for PvP or PvE, just because I don't really heal too often. Uh, they did fix the bug with Endless Hail, so now we should be getting all the ticks of damage now. So it should be 13 ticks. Um, so just uh, really good. Now I'll be able to test out VMA versus Master's Bow. There will be a video on that tomorrow where I do the calculations on that. Um, I use 12 ticks instead of 13 ticks, uh, but that shouldn't affect the math too much. One hand and shield. Uh, shield will just fix an issue there. For medium armor, evasion will no longer grant major expedition when you take area damage. Uh, major Expedition Grant from this ability no longer trigger off area of effect damage over time effects. Basically just remove Major Expedition from Evasion and Shuffle as well as Elude. Uh, so you won't necessarily be quite as fast anymore. This is going to be more for PvP I'd imagine, uh, less so for PvE. Um, mainly because you don't really use this in PvE too much, except unless you're like a medium armor tank in uh, Sunspire. Um, so more of a PvP thing, you will not necessarily be able to get the Major Evasion along with the Major Expedition now. Uh, for Soul Trap, the Soul Trap and Consuming Trap will now only hit one enemy instead of two. Soul Splitting Trap, however, will now hit six enemies instead of three, but the radius will remain at five meters. This is uh, kind of evidence that Zas doesn't really know what they're talking about here, uh, because at least for PvE, it's actually quite easy to get things stacked together. I mean, that's what guilds do. We look for the optimized way to stack ads. Uh, so this is, generally speaking, going to be a buff for soul, for, uh, soul splitting trap. Uh, for DPS in general, because now you're able to hit six things instead of three things with soul trap. Uh, and for organized groups that have, you know, pre-organized stacks, you know, where the stacks are going to be, this is definitely a buff. Uh, so single target DPS, I should say AoE DPS is going to go up because of this change to Soul Trap. Uh, so hopefully, I mean, it's nice that they did this, but at the same time, it's kind of indicative of how little they actually know about endgame rating. Um, this is, generally speaking, going to be a huge buff. I am expecting a sub-15 minute VMA hard mode runs now from guilds like Hodor and Valor and things like that. So yeah, that's that. <laughs> Uh, protective was nerfed, reduced this item trait to 1190 physical and spell resistance at max uh, rarity, uh, down from 1844. Uh, so this is a nerf to protective, more for PvP, you don't really see protective being used in PvE, so you guys are going to need to find some other way to get a physical and spell resistance somehow. Uh, for item sets, uh, they 
I read these through very quickly, and it seems like they're just making sure Major Evasion actually properly applies from these various sets. So Adept Rider, uh, Gossamer, Grace of Gloom, Histbark, uh, those were all changed, so Major Evasion does actually apply to area of effect damage now. Uh, Gossamer, they made it a guaranteed proc, but it's only a two second proc. Um, uh, Grace of Gloom, they, it's also the same thing. They removed the proc chance, so it's 100% chance to proc on the condition, uh, but they reduced it to, to 2000 rather than 3440. Uh, they also removed the cooldown from the heal proc as well. Uh, so just change up a couple of things here. Gossamer change is a little bit weird because it's not really used all too much in PvE, maybe more for PvP. Uh, for the major evasion so as a reminder gossamer uh grants major evasion when you heal somebody now it's a guaranteed for two seconds instead of 10 percent for six seconds uh so i'm not sure how that impacts pvp so much the big thing big reason why gossamer is not using pve because it is that it doesn't proc off of overheals uh the only procs off of actual healing done uh so probably more of a pvp change that's over pve change uh, oblivion's foe grants a thousand weapon and spell damage to soul trap rather than increasing the damage by 100 percent uh i have to go back and double check the coefficients to see whether this is a buff or a nerf uh but kind of an interesting change there pirate skeleton they reduce the duration of the proc to 10 seconds they increase the cooldown to 20 seconds uh, so you can only get 50 percent uptime now in pirate skeleton and the mario defile is now major defile so this is generally speaking going to be a nerf to pirate skeleton not sure whether the defile can still be purged or not i know that was an issue with pirate skeleton in the past where you can just purge the mario defile and basically get all the benefits without any of the detriments uh so it remains to be seen whether they fixed that issue or not but this is generally speaking going to be a nerf to pirate skeleton Gonna be more of a PvP hit, less of a PvE hit because, again, not really used too much in PvE, more of a PvP kind of thing. Uh, so, for those of you get to PvP, I think you guys are gonna need to find a new way to get all your resistances and things like that, uh, just from the nerf to protective and now pirate skeleton here. Uh, Spectre's Eye, just make sure Major Evasion uh, applied correctly. They increased the cooldown to 10 seconds from 6 seconds, but increased the duration to 5 seconds from 3 seconds. Then they fixed a couple of issues with Thunderous Volley here. Uh, so that's pretty much it. In terms of the base game, I think this is all just uh, non-PVE stuff, not really combat stuff. Uh, so generally speaking, the changes here can pretty much be summed up as... Actually, I don't see the orb changes at all that they say they introduced. I guess we'll have to actually go in and see whether or not they actually made the change. Uh, so the orb change that they mentioned in a previous... Um, let me see. It's actually on the PTS thing here. Yeah, additional context. I think it was the first page here yeah so uh you can see here where is it here um so in a future pts patch the synergy from orbs will not cause the orb to vanish and can be activated multiple times by anybody not on the synergy cooldown uh we'll see whether or not it is uh put into this patch notes it seemed like it was going into week two but now it seems like it didn't got added in because they didn't read it in the patch notes at all so it might be a week three change that's happening uh but that's the change that to orbs that should be happening which should make it a little bit better overall the change to one orb at a time change uh so be on the lookout for that doesn't seem to be put into this week might be next week instead so that's pretty much it for this video so generally speaking the summarization can be a lot of bug fixes uh big nerfed pirate skeleton and protective more pvp changes than pve changes here um so those are the main changes there uh be on the lookout for the vma versus masters bow video that's coming out tomorrow uh i will be able to revisit it so expect a revisit fairly soon as well uh, because i did do the next two videos so tuesday and wednesday i have two videos coming out those were done on the previous pds iteration um but uh, the only one that would be affected would be the vma uh, versus masters bow back bar uh but i will be redoing that so there will be a revisit probably towards the end of the week uh just just because they did fix the endless hill bug there so again that's it if you guys have anything else you'd like me to test on the pts please feel free to leave down in the comment section below uh, i will start to take a look at making builds starting on the third week uh but just like my other build videos and my other my current policy, I will not actually be releasing build videos until the patch goes alive. So do expect a couple more PTS videos to be coming out, taking a look at the changes and how they impact PvE. Um, but beyond that, build videos will have to wait until Scale Breaker is released on the live server. But at the very least, you'll get some theorycrafting videos so you guys can see where things are going in general. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.